Welcome property investors. Today, we're gonna to be taking an even deeper dive into DSCR loans. Now, DSCR loans, if you're unfamiliar, are the bedrock of the modern investor. So it behooves you to kind of get to understand these types of loans. Specifically, in this video, we're gonna be covering the DSCR loan and the number one thing that gets overlooked and how to get approved for one of these loans. Before we get started, just a couple of quick notes. If you're unfamiliar with DSCR loans, we recommend that you check out some of our other videos that are really gonna get you up to speed because we're not gonna cover a lot of details about the actual functionality of a DSCR loan in this video. And also for the channel, be sure to show us some love, subscribe, join us, and hit those buttons. I think you know what to do at this point. All right, so let's jump right in. The number one thing that you need to know about getting qualified for a DSCR loan is that you need to own your own primary residence before you go out and try to buy an investment property with one of these loans. Now, there's some very good reasons for it, but it really kind of comes down to federal mortgage regulators. But why would they care? There's actually a good reason for it. And it's because DSCR loans allow the lender to sidestep some of the key provisions in mortgage law. So if you're old enough like me to remember back to the mortgage meltdown days around 2008, 2009, there were some really exotic loan programs in the market at that point in time. Some of them were called stated income loans, no income verification loans, often referred to as liar's loans for obvious reasons. These types of loan programs allowed an applicant to get a mortgage without the bank ever verifying their ability to make the payments on the new loan they were applying for. They were a major contributing factor in the meltdown itself. So the federal government, when the mortgage industry was reformed from the ashes, was done under a new law called the Dodd-Frank Reform Act. Under the Dodd-Frank Reform Act, inside of that was a new standard for lending. It's called ATR, or Ability to Repay. In other words, the lender just can't take your word for it. We have to, as your lender, determine your ability to make the monthly payments for the loan that you're applying for. So we have to do that in traditional ways through tax return analysis, W-2s, pay stubs, 1099s, et cetera. This actually forms a kind of a loan called a QM loan or a qualified mortgage loan. Examples of QM loans are conventional loans, FHA, VA, USDA, et cetera. Now, you may have heard of non-QM loans, also called unconventional loans. These are non-qualified mortgages. So in layman's terms, what that means is that the lender still has to vet out your ability to make the payments on the new loan you're applying for, but they can use alternative ways of doing it. And this is where DSCR loans kind of come into play. This is a very specific non-QM loan only for investment occupancy. There are some legal reasons, and it's also because these loans for investment purposes allow the lender to do a few other things and treat it like a business transaction instead of a home that the applicant is trying to live in. You're gonna be the owner and you're gonna be the landlord of the property, in other words. You're not allowed to occupy any unit of the home that you are getting the mortgage for under a DSCR program. Suffice it to say, federal regulators know about this program and they're fine with it. However, they really want lenders to be very strict in their qualification of the applicant to make sure that the loan is being lent to the borrower, the applicant, for its intended purpose, which is investment property only. So in order to meet this standard, this is why lenders require that you show some sort of proof that you already own your own home. If not, the temptation would be way too easy for you to just say, yeah, sure, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, buy this for investment purposes and then just move into it. That would be considered a type of mortgage fraud called fraud for property. You really don't wanna get into that kind of territory. It has a very high cost, it's just not worth it. These loans are so easy to work with so you really don't want to kind of mess that part up. So you want to make sure you're, you know, dotting your I's, crossing your T's and doing things the right way. So the way a lender vets it out is that we will often require you to produce a copy of your most recent mortgage statement for your primary residence. And that way we know that that is your home, your homestead, and we'll be vetting that out. Now, are there exceptions to this? Yes. In certain cases, a lender like us, we may allow you to be a renter and to purchase investment real estate, but you are gonna have a couple of extra documentation requirements. First of all, you're gonna need to produce a lease from a 
institutional landlords. So that's going to be institutional, in other words, like a property management company, real estate management company, et cetera. So in other words, you can't just rent it from Joe Sixpack, the landlord. It has to be from an institutional landlord that we can trust as an independent third party. You'll also need to be able to produce proof through your banking records of the most recent 12 months of lease payments. That way we knew unequivocally you are covering the roof over your own head before you endeavor to be someone else's landlord at the same time. Now, the bottom line here is that if you already own your own primary residence, you're well on your way to loan approval. However, if you are a renter at this point, make sure that you're covering that with your loan originator at the time of application to make sure that they can accommodate your situation. This is going to save you time, and it's also going to set you up for success early on in the process. And that's it. We hope you found this information helpful and that you're a little bit wiser about DSCR loan programs than when you started this video. By the way, if you're looking to invest in real estate using DSCR, we lend in 29 states. We have a wonderful array of different programs to help almost every DSCR need. And we have a ton of experience with this kind of loan program. We want to be your lending partner on your first and future transactions. And by the way, if you're out there looking for DSCR programs and you want to do your own calculations, take advantage of our free DSCR calculator. It's available on our website. We'll include a link in the description below. You can run that anytime, day or night, much as you want to, to see how profitable a potential piece of real estate could be for you. Thanks again for watching. I'm Derek Bisson, and this is Unconventional Lending.